The Atlanta class started life as the return to a design concept from before the First World War, namely the scout cruiser or destroyer flotilla leader. The basic principle was that of an overgrown destroyer that could keep up with the rest of the flotilla, but by being larger could accommodate a command staff, more powerful signalling equipment, and a heavier armament to give the unit an advantage over an enemy flotilla that might be led by simply a normal destroyer. As a result, the Atlanta class used the same 5-inch 38 caliber gun as many American destroyers, which was also a very good anti-aircraft weapon. But unlike a destroyer, which would have between 4 and 6 guns, usually in single mounts, the design called for no fewer than 16 such weapons, which made them highly effective escort vessels when it came to dealing with enemy aircraft. After the first four ships, the Oakland subclass was developed that further optimised the ships away from a surface combat role and more towards the anti-aircraft role. The class comprised four ships to the original design, Atlanta, Juno, San Diego, and San Juan. The next four were of the Oakland class, Oakland, Reno, Flint, and Tucson. Three more ships were built later to a modified version of the design, but were sufficiently different to become a separate class. The Atlanta saw heavy action during World War II, collectively earning 54 battle stars. Two of the class were sunk in action, the Atlanta and Juno, both at the Battle of Guadalcanal. The original armament of the class would consist of eight twin turrets carrying the 5-inch 38 caliber gun, three super-firing forward, three super-firing aft, and one on each wing. Initially directed by two Mark 37 fire control systems, during the war radar and improved fire control systems were fitted which greatly improved the accuracy and gave them the ability to operate at night. Three quad 28mm guns completed the loadout, but after a fourth was added it was decided the 28mm or 1.1 inch gun was not effective and they were replaced by twin 40mm Bofors mounts instead. In addition, increasing numbers of 20mm single mounts were added as the war went on, and eventually the ships would carry 12 20mm and 10 40mm guns, which, along with other wartime additions, was beginning to make them unstable from the additional weight of weapons, ammunition, and extra men that were needed to man them all. The Oakland class got rid of the two wing turrets, replacing them with twin 40mm guns. This gave the ships four less 5-inch guns, but eight more 40mm and four more 20mm. As the Kamikaze's attacks escalated towards the end of the war, some of the 20mm guns were replaced by even more 40mm guns to stop the aircraft more effectively at longer ranges. Both classes were built with two quad torpedo launchers, one on each side, although a number of ships had them removed during the war to minimise the risk of explosion and to add even more anti-aircraft guns. Finally, as if the ships were not covered in quite enough firepower, in 1942 they were also fitted with sonar and depth charge launchers for anti-submarine warfare, although the projectors were quickly removed for, guess again, more anti-aircraft guns. Due to their origin as flotilla leaders, the ships could make just under 34 knots and were lightly protected, with a 3.5 inch belt being the thickest armour present. Although, as you might expect, they were formidable as anti-aircraft ships, the Atlanta class cruisers didn't tend to fare so well in surface combat. The only two cruisers of the class engaged in surface combat were sunk, Atlanta and Juno, which comprised two-thirds of all US Navy light cruiser losses during World War II. Both were sunk during combat in the Guadalcanal campaign, but it was not the unique armament of the Atlanta class that contributed to their loss, but rather the fact that the ship's small size and light armour gave little protection from the torpedoes that sealed their fate. Admittedly, Atlanta being shot up by 8-inch shells from the USS San Francisco by mistake also didn't help. Conversely, in the same battle, uh, the other ships showed their ability in their original role, as they were able to rapidly overwhelm many Japanese destroyers. The sinking of Juno is especially important as it caused a change in American policy. Previously, it had been possible for an entire generation of one family to serve on a single ship. In this case, the five Sullivan brothers were aboard. But when the ship was sunk, the explosion was so catastrophic that nearby American ships assumed that there could not possibly be any survivors, and left. In fact, over a hundred of the crew survived, but by the time somebody came back to rescue them, only ten were left. Two of the Sullivans had actually survived the sinking, 
but none of them survived long enough to be picked up. As a result, US policy was changed so that at least one sibling must serve on a different ship or in a different unit if all have been listed, and also, if all but one are killed in action, the remaining service man or woman is to be released back home. All eight ships served in World War II, with six of them surviving the war. Atlanta was commissioned in December 1941, just a few weeks before the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, and would participate as an anti-aircraft cruiser in the decisive American victory at the Battle of Midway in June 1942, before being sent south to fight in the Solomon Islands. Atlanta was eventually scuttled after receiving a torpedo hit and heavy gunfire damage from Japanese surface warships and the aforementioned USS San Francisco in November 1942 at the Battle of Guadalcanal. Juno was also heavily damaged in surface combat in the same battle, and then sunk by the Japanese submarine I-26. Reno was torpedoed off Leyte in November 1944, resulting in a large fire and significant flooding, but was saved from sinking by the damage control efforts of the crew. After the war, the six surviving ships in this class were decommissioned between 1947 and 1949 and placed in the reserve fleet, but were ultimately struck and scrapped by 1970. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.